Amp simulators are super cool, but what if you want to use your own guitar amp and record that tone into your GarageBand project? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record and release your best music. And if, like me, you're a bit of a fan of guitars and you have a few guitar amps lying around that you want to actually capture the tone of, well then, this video is going to be for you. I'm going to grab this microphone and I'm going to record the sound of this guitar amp directly into my iPad using GarageBand. So let's jump in and show you how right now. So what is the gear that we need to use to get this done? Well, we need a guitar amplifier. We need a guitar and a guitar cable to hook up to our guitar amp. We need a microphone. I'm using the MXL 550. If you want to learn about any of this gear, there'll be links down in the description below. Or you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. I've also got a microphone cable, which is important because I'll need to plug this microphone into something. And what I'll actually be using in this demonstration is this. This is the Tascam IXZ or IXZ. It is a combo jack interface here it accepts a guitar input directly so you can record this with your guitar amp sims or you can do what we're doing in this demo which is plug in an xlr microphone and then we can actually use this by plugging in the three and a half mil jack into our ipad and we can record our guitar amp in as an audio recorded track now there are other options that you could use. You can use any USB interface or even a lightning interface as long as it has a microphone preamp built into it. And then you'll need to use something like the lightning to USB cable. And all of this gear again is down in the description and at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. So my amp is on, my guitar is plugged in and we are ready to go there. What I now need to do is get a mic cable and plug this microphone in to our Tascam IXZ, and then I need to connect that into my iPad, which I've got down here, which is running GarageBand. So we've grabbed the XLR cable, we're gonna plug this end into the Tascam IXZ, and the other end is gonna plug into our microphone. And they're all red, so they're gonna go nice and fast, and we are ready to go. So now we need to connect this to our iPad. So the 3.5 mil jack just goes into our iPad's headphone jack, like so, and now we are almost ready to go. All we need to do now is switch our IXZ into microphone mode, turn on the phantom power, because this is a condenser microphone, and then we need to dial in the right level of input gain, which we'll do once we get set up here in GarageBand and we start recording. So now regardless of what interface you're using, what you would do now is plug a pair of headphones into the headphone jack. But because I want you to be able to hear the audio, I've plugged this in through my mixer and then I'll put that through one of the channels here so that you and I can actually hear and monitor the audio here in GarageBand. Okay, so we're here in GarageBand now. I've got Kyle on the drums here. He's sounding like this. Sounds a bit like, uh, oh, Mickey, you're so fine. Anyway, let's hit the plus button down here. Now, instead of adding a guitar amp track like we would if we were recording uh, using our amp sims here, which I've got other videos, which I'll link up there and down there to show you about, we're going to use the audio recorder because we just want a clean audio track to get the sound of this amp into. So let's tap more sounds here. We've got fun and clean, and we'll tap on that one. And now we have a clean audio track. Now, I mentioned the input here on my Tascam IXZ, which you can not quite see down here. What I'm gonna do is let's dial down to zero at the moment. So if I tap on this mic, nothing's coming through. But if I dial that up to around about, uh, well, there you go, you can hit, I've, I've put it to full and you can already see it there getting my voice. If we drop that down, now if we sort of tap there, yeah, it's going up to around about half. So we need to dial in our input gain to be about right. So let's just play guitar here. See, that's way too loud. So we're gonna dial down the input gain. Still a bit too loud, down a bit further. Still a bit too loud. Yeah, so you need to make sure that we get this just right. Still too loud, yep. So we're gonna make sure that we're not gonna clip. Too low now, we'll bring it back up. Now you might think, Pete, you're taking a long time to get your audio level right, but you need this because you don't want to clip your signal. That's about right, it needs to come down a tiny amount, and there you go, we should be about right there with. You want it to be between 50 and 70% of your input gain, and this is the most important thing. Now, if you're using 
a, a device like this, you've got a control there. You've also got a control here. So at the moment, that's up quite high. So yes, you have two different levels of gain here, and we can talk about gain staging, but experiment with those. If you are using a completely digital interface, one that uses USB or Lightning, you won't have this input level here. You'll only have the ability to control that on your hardware. But get that right to start with. <laughs> so that you don't have to play around with it afterwards and you definitely don't want it to be too loud or you're going to clip your signal. Okay, so now that we're comfortable that that's set up, we can actually turn our monitoring on. So if we tap on this one, we can now... We can hear that through our microphone as well, through our headphones. So I can hear that in my headphones here and you'll be able to hear that twice. If All I'll do is I'll turn my microphone volume all the way down and you'll be able to hear just the monitored audio. So that was just the audio coming just through the headphone jack here. So that's what you would be hearing if you're playing back. And the beauty part is that when we are recording, we can hear the drums through our headphones while we're recording this guitar. So let's do that now. I'm gonna hit record. There's gonna be two bars of lead in, and then I'm gonna play along to these drums. All right, so that has recorded now. We'll go back to our track view here, and there it is. So you can see there we've got a nice, healthy signal there. It's not too loud, it's not too soft, and even though we're only using this Task MIXZ, which is a very cheap and quite simple interface, we're gonna get a pretty good tone out of this. So let's come here, we're just gonna solo this one. Let's come to where the guitar kicks in and take a listen back. So that's sounding pretty good now. You're hearing a little bit more string noise because I'm pretty close here. You normally wouldn't have it right behind you like this. You'd have it a little bit further away and then you're not gonna get any of the actual guitar sound. It's all gonna be coming through the amp. So keep that in mind when you're listening back to this. But now what I'll do is we can use our distorted tone or our crunchy tone here on our Marshall amp. You can also use guitar pedals and I've got a whole other video which I'll link up there. So if I wanted to have my pedal board, if I wanted to use other pedals here, to do this, I can absolutely do that as well. So uh, for now though, let's just add a second crunchy distorted track to this song. Right, so let's just simply duplicate this track because we just want another clean audio track and now we're gonna hit record and record our crunchy guitars. <laughs> All right, so our second guitar track is recorded there using the other channel on our amp here. And yes, I've recorded that way too soft here. Let's just solo it out and take a listen here. So yeah, it is sounding okay, but it's way too quiet there. But that's okay, we've got some control here because we can just use the cool merge function here. We'll merge this track together. Once again, check out the link above if you wanna learn how to do this. And there you go, it's normalized this track up. We'll turn the volume down now because it's gonna be really loud. But let's now listen to this section back with our two guitars. In fact, to make it even more interesting, let's pan these suckers. Let's grab that one and pan it left. We'll grab this one and pan it right. And now let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So yeah, we've got some EQing, we've got some processing and effects to add on here, but that's just the dry signal going in there. But this is a very quick and easy way that all we need is a microphone here and we need an interface and then we can hook that up and record any sound we like. And it doesn't matter what you're plugging through this amp, it doesn't matter what else you wanna record. If you've got a microphone, you can point it at it, use an interface and record it directly into GarageBand or into any other application on your Mac, your PC, your iPhone or your iPad, you'll be good to go. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time around. And there you have it. Are guitar amp simulators bad? No, they are fantastic. I use them all the time. But sometimes when you just want that tone of your own guitar amp, this is a great little method to use. Thanks again for watching. Comments, questions, suggestions down below and I'll see you next time.